The 7th of December, 1943, found Paul again on alert, two years after the Pearl Harbor attack. In his diary, Paul reminisced about the day that will live in infamy, when he was a civilian at Claire and Ethel's tavern playing cards. Now I am in Upper Assam, the wettest spot on earth, waiting for an alert to fight in the sky. I certainly hope and pray we shall not have to witness another infamous anniversary while engaged in war. Paul did get airborne that day for a three-hour local patrol mission. Then, on 11 December, he recorded this account of his first real combat sortie, which lasted three hours, twenty minutes. 11 December. Today I had my baptism in combat, but as it turned out, it didn't amount to much. Yesterday, Fort Hertz, over the hump, was attacked by Zeros. Our other squadron intercepted them and knocked down seven confirmed and two probables without loss to our ships. So today we went out on a fighter reconnaissance to try to locate the field in Burma where these ships were based, and if possible to catch them on the ground and strafe them. We passed over the hump, a long stretch of desolate mountains and valleys of dense Burma jungle. The first field was Bamo in lower Burma. The field was pockmarked by bomb craters, and no planes were there. We did strafe and destroy a steam engine, though. Then we went over to Kata and Indal, both close by, but discovered no planes whatsoever. These fields were in good shape, too, but we could find nothing at all to destroy. We expected fighter opposition as we went deep into their territory, but the whole trip, over three hours, was entirely uneventful. I'd sure hate to have to bail out in that country which we flew over. Nothing but jungle and mountains. Sure would be a tough proposition to walk out, for not only does it offer topographical obstacles, but Jap bases are everywhere. The official report of the Japanese raid on Fort Hertz noted that the airfield was attacked by three bombers and four fighters, with all of the bombers and two of the fighters shot down by the Allied defenders. On 13 December... The P-40 pilots at Teok spent most of the day on alert until finally receiving Paul's first red alert scramble by radio from 80th Fighter Group headquarters. As the pilots raced to their planes, Paul described Indian soldiers jumping into foxholes and appearing as if by magic, with full battle dress and all kinds of guns. He said it seemed funny, later anyway. He recorded the details of the two-hour, 40-minute mission in his logbook. Scramble. Japson area, 36 bombers, 20 zeros, no contact. And also in his diary. 13 December. We took off immediately, but were held in this area for reserve, so to speak, and were not allowed to join in the scrap going on just a short distance away from here. We circled aimlessly at 20,000 feet, listening on the radio to the conversations which always take place during dogfights. There were 36 Sallies, Jap bombers, and 20 Zeeks, Jap Zeros. The bombs they dropped were 100 pounds and did slight damage to a C-47 and destroyed a P-40 on the ground. However, two A-36As crashed on takeoff at a nearby field, killing one pilot and injuring another. During the fight, eight Japanese were shot down and nine damaged. We lost one P-40, but the pilot got out safely by parachute. He also, by the way, destroyed the bomber that shot him down. The next day, the squadron bombed and strafed the Japanese forces at Michina. Each P-40 carried three 100-pound bombs, one on each wing and one on the belly. On their first pass, each pilot dropped his bombs along the runway or on the bashas alongside it. Paul described the action. 14 December. One basha, after a direct hit, exploded violently, emitting fire and smoke about 2,000 feet into the air. After bombing, we proceeded strafing. About all we could find, however, besides a few bashas, were a herd of elephants and water buffalo in the water. We gave him hell, all right. Coming back, we were all short of gas, and Weston got lost from us, arriving back ahead of us and landing the wrong way, directly in our path. Johnson was almost out of gas, but to avoid a wreck, he had to go around again. When he finally did get in, he just landed when he ran out of gas and his engine quit. Close. 